Welcome back to MKE Gadgets. Today we're going to talk about edge finders. This is my favorite edge finder. I've used many over the years and there's a lot of great features on this one. This is the Starrett 827B edge finder. They go for about $35. You can buy them online or at your local industrial supplier. The diameter of the barrel is a half inch. This diameter is 200 thousandths. So when you edge find in, you move over half or 200 thousandths or 100 thousandths. On the opposite end, it has a nice point that you can pick up a scribe line or a hole. You want this edge to be highly lapped. So when you use an edge finder, it will snap. And that you understand more when you go over by the mill. A nice feature of Sterra tools are they sell replacement parts. So if you make a mistake, the spring in here will stretch out and break and parts will go flying. Pick up a replacement spring right from Starrett, part number 17809-0 for under $4. So if you damage your edge finder, you can buy the spring and replace it for $4. And my years as a machinist, believe me, I have damaged quite a few of these. For years, I've been using these tin boxes that staples come in. And I like to put them in my toolbox as a little drawer divider. But putting your edge finder in here, it's kind of hard to get it out. And it bangs up every time you open and roll. It slides around every time you open and close your drawer. So recently, I 3D printed this insert that fits right in there. It has cutouts for your fingers. And it stops it from rattling around in your box. I'll put a link below to Thingiverse so you can print these out. If you need a tin box, you can just print out the insert and it'll stop it from sliding around in your box. Let's go over to the mill, use the edge finder, and if we're lucky, maybe we'll break one. See you at the mill. So we're at the Bridgeport mill. I have my Stuart edge finder. And I said I like the barrel because it's a half inch. It goes into a half inch collet. I use a half inch collet a lot, so it's readily available. A lot of times when you have a part or a fixture, you want to find a corner. First, we're going to edge find this edge along the X axis and then the top edge along the Y axis. We're going to run at a thousand RPMs. And you can see how this is eccentric. This part here will move over to the mill, and once they're running even, then we know then we're a hundred thousandths away from the edge of the part. The hundred thousandths is twice this diameter. Sometimes it's better just to do it, so let's do it. Bring the quill down, thousand RPMs, and So these two are running concentric, and you move it one more thousandths and it snaps out. You raise the quill out, and you go to your digital readout, and you clear out X. So here we are in X. Back at the edge finder, we move over 100 thousandths. half the diameter of this pin, and then we clear out the X axis on the controller. Now we do the same thing with the Y axis. Thousand RPMs. So you see it run concentric and it snaps out. Raise the quill. We're gonna go Y, zero, 
And then we're so now we move our y, negative one hundred thousandths. Back on the controller, we zero out our y. And now we can return to zero. So now we're gonna return both axes to the zero point. And it go. Four. At this point, I just wanna verify my center point there. So I'll take out my edge finder. I'll take out the edge finder out of the collet. I'll flip it around and we'll use this point. Turn it on a thousand RPMs and I'll get these two surfaces running concentric. Now I'll just bring the point down. I'll look at it from this way and make sure I'm along this edge and I'll look at it from the front. And I just verified that that's my zero. Another unique feature about the pointy end of the edge finder, I have a punch mark and I want to drill a hole here. I can come down, move my X and Y till I'm right above the punch mark. Every once in a while, when you're edge finding, you might accidentally move it the wrong way. That will break the spring in there. spring breaks this part goes flying we're lucky it landed here on a tray let's go back to the bench and repair this with the replacement spring I got from Starrett so here's a broken edge finder and if we look at that spring the spring was stretched so far that the hook opened up a little bit so here's the damaged hook and here's a new hook. Now we can bend that hook back and close up that gap, and that will probably work. But let's just replace it with a new one. The tool we're gonna use is a paper clip, and I bent a little hook on there with some pliers. This is kind of tricky to do, and it takes you a few tries to get it right. Let's go to the sky cam. Make sure you have the new spring. Hook one end on. Slide the paper clip through. Hook the spring in the paper clip and pull it forward. This is the tricky part. You gotta pull the spring through, feed this hole onto the end of the spring, and then remove the paper clip without any of it falling apart. This is a job where you really need three hands. You see a little hook of the spring? Get this on there. Okay, now all, now it's all together. Now you have to carefully remove the paper clip. If this works all right, nothing will fall apart. Pull it through. Put your hook on the spring and gently remove the paper clip. Hey, it only took me three tries. With this one replaced, hopefully it'll last a long time. There's a lot more videos on YouTube on edge finding. Today's video wasn't really about using edge finder, was repairing one after you broke it. I like the Starrett's because they have replacement parts. This is MKE Gadgets. I hope you enjoyed today's video about repairing an edge finder. I hope you found this interesting. Share it with your friends, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow.